Keep in mind, we're kind of switching the whole channel around. This will be the third time that we've started the homestead. Um, and we're only starting this one because we moved to North Carolina and left West Virginia. But we're gonna take you step by step, breaking ground, setting it up all the way to market gardening and, and CSA. So you wanna to subscribe to the channel. You wanna give us a like if you like the video. Um, Tracy's out today doing some projects with a friend and she'll be along later this evening and, and join in the video. But this is going to be an exciting channel because it's going to give you a step-by-step -step method to build a homestead. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to garden an acre, 10 acres, or whether you just want to have four garden, raised garden boxes out. Um, we'll show you how to do this, how we do it anyway. Okay, well it came a heck of a rainstorm last night and pretty much drowned out the entire neighborhood. I didn't get an episode up last week. Um, it turned out I got sick. I was real sick. Sick to the point that I went and took a COVID test, which I never thought I would. And luckily I was negative on that test. And uh, then the day after I started to feel better, something pulled in my left shoulder. I wasn't doing any work, um, just sitting around. It knotted up so bad, it was like tears in the eyes. Uh, couldn't get up, couldn't get down. I had to get that worked out. That took several days. So. I was down a few days, which is very rare for me because I'm the guy who is always up on my feet doing something at a high speed. So today, there is gonna be no outside work. As you can see, the entire neighborhood is anywhere water can stand, water standing. Um, the, uh, the driveway pretty much is just a path down the middle with water right up to the edges of it. We still gotta work that out sometime this summer. At least we're out of the mud, though. We don't need four-wheel drive to get in and out. It, it got ugly for a while. And uh, the, the tractor's not going anywhere. It's, it's parked where it's at. The garden is just completely saturated. There's nowhere else to put any water. So we're going to do some inside projects today. I am going to get some chicken feed from Tractor Supply. And I'm going to pick up a latch for the greenhouse door, which will be my only outside project today. And then I'm going to come in and check on the seeds we've got started over here, see where we're at with the cuttings, maybe take a few cuttings off the hybrid poplar, explain that process, start unpacking some of these boxes that we've got from Amazon. The UPS guys become our best friend. It's like, Whoa. but uh, we'll go through those boxes and see what we've got. We've got peppers already seeded, um, broccoli in, lettuce. If I can get the greenhouse set up, we'll probably put lettuce in the greenhouse coming up this next week. So... Let's get tore into this and let me run off to uh, Tractor Supply, get the things I need, and get back and we'll, we'll film something. I've got a lot of requests to show how we strengthen the greenhouse, how we do the corners. It's a Harbor Freight 10 by 12. Um, mine is strengthened more than most ever will be because we lost part of the top of it in a hurricane, but the sides that I had strengthened stood true to that hurricane. So I'll probably go over the posts in the corner, some of the basic things you need to do if you're going to have a greenhouse and you have wind. So I'm going to head out to Tractor Supply now and get what I need, and uh, I'll get back with you here shortly. Driving out here, the sun's coming out, so hopefully maybe the uh, rain will clear for the day. On my way to Tractor Supply now, probably about a 20 minute trip from the house. You gotta go right through downtown, our small town here, which gets pretty crazy. When store season starts, it's not so bad here in the winter months. Tours are gone for another month or two. Lots and lots of acreage around here. You wouldn't think living eight minutes from the beach that we would have as much farmland as we have here. It's pretty much open land until you get right over to the islands. Um, you know, we've got four islands in the area that are primarily the beach area, and then we've got the downtown area. But there is a lot of farmland. You might be able to see some of it going by. But this has been traditionally a farm area. The biggest problem we have here in the summertime is the heat, which should have exceed uh, some days 100 degrees with heat indexes up in 120s, 130s. So, Keeping everything shaded from the heat, you have to put a shade cloth on your greenhouse as it gets a little bit farther along. Uh, you've got to keep water because the ground down here is a sandy, loamy soil. If you get some places, it's just pure sand. 
we were blessed when we bought our place that it's a sandy loamy soil. It's very, very fertile, very rich, where they've put compost and, and cut crops on it, left them lay over the years. So, but, but the water drains very, very quickly once the water table settled down in the spring. Okay, we'll see if we can find some uh, latches here at the Home Depot, or at the tractor supply. I love Home Depot. And uh, save this maybe a trip to uh, Home Depot. Let's see what we got here. Got everything I needed from Tractor Supply. I did find a latch. The problem's been, if it latches on the outside, how are you gonna get out from the inside of the greenhouse? So I bought a self-adjusting latch, and it's just a, a basic pull latch that you pull the tab here to open. I'll drill a hole through the door, run a string to the inside with a nut on it so it can't fall out, and that way if you get locked in, you can get out. I've come up with another brilliant idea while I'm out. I think I will run by Home Depot anyway, even though I've got my latch and uh, get a few patio stones so I can get rid of the water that we have to walk through to get from the house to the cars when we have rain like we did last night. Let's cruise on over to Home Depot and hope I stay out of trouble and don't overspend patio stones. That's all I'm allowed to get, patio stones. Made it safely back from Home Depot and Tractor Supply. I found the uh, 12 by 12 concrete patio stones for dollar 68 a piece we've had this ongoing problem since we moved in here when we get heavy heavy rain like if you get into a uh, hurricane or just a heavy rain event and we've had rain week after week after week being that the water tables are so full here uh, when when they get this full water just stands everywhere so i'm going to drop these patio stones in real quick before i go put the latch on the greenhouse So here I am again filming in the greenhouse, which is somewhere I spent too many weeks at. I'm going to get this latch put on. It is a self-adjusting, which is kind of a new thing. It's a self-adjusting latch. So you have your latch on one side that uh, latches the pin. But the pin goes on this side and actually floats so that it... Uh, if the doors change a little bit, then the latch is still effective. So I'll get this latch on and then uh, I think if you stick around a little bit, we're going to talk more about some of the strengthening. I see a lot of questions asked on Facebook and other social media that I'm on and YouTube. Um, what's the basic things you want to do to strengthen them? And I see a lot of greenhouses, just of the Harbor Freight greenhouses, just flat. And I'm like, wow. But stick around and uh, Later in the video, we're going to go over some of the strengths on the Harbor Freight Greenhouse that you absolutely have to have regardless of where you live. I've got the latch on the greenhouse. As you can see through the windows, we got another storm brewing on us. So about any time, it'll probably start pouring the rain down again. So I'm going to wrap up here and I'm going to go in the house and start working with seedlings and plants and try to get that in this video. As you can see, this door is solid. I've got a pin type latch in this door. It keeps that door solid. This door just has the simple latch that I showed you in tractor supply earlier, and it latched, and I'm in the greenhouse. 
But don't worry, because I thought about that. I drilled a hole, put a piece of baling twine from a baler in here. When you pull that, it opens the latch on the outside. Kind of a little bit country, a little bit uh, backwoods, but I do come from West Virginia, so I have that ability. But that was the simplest way I could think to get the latch. That lets you have the door shut while you're in here. You don't have to leave it open and risk the wind grabbing it. So, I'm pleased. Hey, Eddie. We working on a greenhouse today? You want to get out and run around in the mud, don't you? Come here, buddy. Come here. The first thing we want to talk about is securing the panels. Everyone asks, how do you secure the panels? And it seems like one of the consensus online is you just put a self-tapping screw right in the center of the panel on each cross. That works okay unless you have really high winds. If the wind gets in the greenhouse, anyway, if a panel comes loose, the door comes open, if it can get in and push, it can pull that screw right through that plastic. So what I came up with was aluminum strips. You buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's just a simple flat piece of aluminum. It's half inch wide, 36 inches long, and it's 16th of an inch in thickness. Very, very thin. Cut these in half, and you end up with this. There's already holes in this one because I've taken it off. You don't even need to drill holes with a self-tapping screw. You just put this across the bar on the panel, put three screws in it, and you don't ever have to worry about the panel coming off. So the first thing you would have to do is measure 36 inches. Half of that is 18. So mark that at 18. Use a hacksaw, a grinder, whatever. Mark it at 18 inches, then take your cutoff wheel or your hacksaw and cut it in half. That'll give you two per section. As you can see, the strips come just a little bit short, just an inch or so, but the strength in that panel, these clips, once you get top and bottom, these clips have very little to do. And you could put strips in there if you wanted. I didn't, I just left the clips in there. But the clips won't come into play because they're pinned so well. So the first thing I would do if I were gonna strengthen my Harbor Freight greenhouse would be to get these panels secure. So let's move on to the next thing that's just absolutely mandatory with the Harbor Freight greenhouse. Number two, but not, uh, not to be, uh, second number one, the four by fours in the corners are critical to the strength of this greenhouse. Now forget the roof that I've added to mine. Remember my roof got damaged in a hurricane so I just simply framed a new roof on it. So just try to imagine that we still have the Harbor Freight greenhouse roof on it and in all of its glory. But when you first put the kit up, the, the four by fours in the corner, set in concrete in the ground are going to be critical. The other thing is those four by fours are mounted to the base. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about what are they going to do for a foundation on the greenhouse. What we opted to go with was a ground contact that's 20 years in direct contact with the ground. Treated four by six timbers. Now think of a four by four except it's four by six. We buried it in the ground, we leveled it, we left it out of the ground about two inches sticking up. We put the four by fours in the corners. All four corners of the greenhouse got a four by four. We notched those so that they would set in there in a saddle and then we took long four inch, four and a half inch lag bolts drilled from the outside in both corners. So they met into that four by four and they're anchored down. Then we used screws and screwed the entire greenhouse, both sides of the corner here and here to that four by four. So then in between, in the middles of each wall, we stuck a four by four in the ground or a section of it in concrete and then lag bolted that. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight four by fours that secure the foundation and four in the corners that keep the greenhouse from shifting. Now, one thing I did on the, I'll move this over. I've started to do here since I've reframed because I saw the stresses this greenhouse took when the winds got over 100 with gusts at 120. I cut these 24 inch 45 degree miters on 
and I'll set those into the top rail. Which brings me to another important point. Once you get the 4x4s in, even if you still have the Harbor Freight greenhouse roof on, put a band and notch it, mount it to the 4x4s, and put an outer band all the way around the greenhouse, and then screw your top into it. If I had it to do over again, I would have come up with the old roof on, with the original roof, I still would have come up with a peak out, and I'd have taken a couple 2x4s this way, mounted into the ends with the roof screwed in, and then the pressure from the storm couldn't have done this to my roof. It just simply crushed it in, and it was unusable at that point. The next most important thing is build shelving in your greenhouse. Mount it to the 4x4s in the rear, right in line with the first row from the ground of the aluminum bands that go around the greenhouse. Use a treated 2x4, put that in the back, right against the greenhouse, and then build your shelving unit out. Um, the reason is, then you can go outside and take some self-tapping screws or you can drill holes and, and use some outdoor screws that don't corrode and come along in four or five places and connect the outside walls of the greenhouse to that shelf inside. Bam! And then it can't flex, it can't push. So now you'll have your corners secure and then your side walls will have strength where they can't go either way because they'll be mounted to the shelving units inside. I've still got to put shelving units in the back of this one. We've taken a lot out since the damage occurred. We've got to get new plastic down. We're going to put pea gravel in with stepping stones for the floor. Um, we learned that you get a lot of dirt and a lot of water moving around in a greenhouse. And with the pea gravel, it soaks in because we have this sandy loamy soil here. But get your shelving units in. We'll put a second shelving unit at this height with this band. We'll attach the 2x4 to the corners on the 4x4 and then we'll come out 12 inches and then we'll screw this also but it's already really secure compared to what it was before we put the bottom shelves in okay forgive my mess but I wanted to talk about trays people ask all the time ah, where do you get good trays if you're going to run a greenhouse and you're going to garden these came from the bootstrap farmer the bootstrap farmer, um, just look them up online. They're, they're not as cheap as the ones you buy at Amazon, but these cups are not. These are something that you can use year after year after year. So if your budget doesn't allow, invest in a few each year. The trays themselves are solid. They're, they're not flimsy. They don't, uh, they're well worth the investment for something that you're going to use year after year. That's just a tidbit of information on the side bootstrap farmer and they do sell on Amazon they uh, they also have their own web store the 1020 trays I think we've got the 72s um, but, but they can set them up any way you want they've got domes for them if you need them we start most of our seed in the house and and get it to the top of the plastic in the domes and then we start to remix it in pots now I buy an extremely cheap pot they look like a little clay pot a little three inch pot they're very flimsy. They'll hold up for a year or two if you're careful with them. You lose a few each year. We get them in those three inch pots and then set them in the 1020 trays in the greenhouse when that time comes. That shuts that door solid. That's the string from the inside. When you pull it, it just pulls the latch up and allows the door to open. Cool. So let's go in the house and do something else. So here comes a little bit more of that unsolicited advice. Now, first we gotta say hi to Eddie because he needs attention. If you're gonna homestead and you're gonna be on a farm and you're watching this series to watch us set up this homestead, the first thing you need is a good pair of boots because you can't stop because it gets wet. You don't wanna have wet feet, especially if it's cold outside. Now I've always been a huge fan of muck boots by brand name. $120 a pair, they're Waterproof down here, neoprene at the top. Here's the trick though. These aren't muck boots. Tractor Supply makes their own brand called Schmidt. These run $65 a pair. They'll last season after season. They've got good tread on the bottom. The neoprene will keep you nice and warm in the wintertime. It doesn't sweat you to death in the summer. Um, 
they've got an insert in them for your feet, but they're waterproof and warm. If you're gonna get a homestead, the first thing you wanna do is get good boots. In case y'all didn't know, we hatched some chickens. We ended up with five. We had six born, but one had uh, a bad leg and, and didn't make it. These are Rhode Island red chicks. We hatched off the eggs right out of our uh, coop. So there was a new incubator to us this year. We uh, read a lot of reviews on it, decided to get it. We put 52 eggs in it. We candled the eggs. We should have probably had 40 chicks born out of this incubator. But as you can see, we ended up with five. So colossal fail. Everything was good. The temperature stayed automatically set. The humidity did good for quite some time, but then the humidity started to drop. Humidity is so important to a good egg hatch because as, as you get in the last three, four days of the hatch, you really need to bring that humidity up. That helps the chicks get out. But instead, the humidity was dropping. We think it was because two, two things. We took eggs from the coop that had gotten cold in the 20s and 30s, and we gathered them as soon as we could and brought them into the house. Second thing is we think because it started getting cold outside, the furnace kicked on in the house and that started to dry the house and the humidity in the incubator just couldn't keep up. So we got a really small hatch and we'll try again once we get better humidity because North Carolina has plenty of humidity, just not in the house in the winter time. Tracy just got in. She had an incredibly long day today. Yes, I did. She was working with a friend and they are, they just remodeled a 10 bedroom, 10 bathroom. Is it two kitchens? One kitchen. One kitchen, beach house that, that they rent out. And they're in there redecorating and rehanging pictures and, and making it look good. So we're gonna kinda cut the video short this evening and uh, let her go ahead and cook this chicken. And maybe we'll try tomorrow evening to film some stuff on the seedlings we got started. And yeah, we've got to get those taken care of. They're starting to come up. Yep, we got some up in the back and none up in the front. The peppers take forever to come up. You think that your seeds are dead. Yeah. But we'll uh, we'll catch up with y'all tomorrow evening and uh, grow the seeds. Leave a comment. You know, now that we're going to do another video, maybe there's something you want to know about homesteading or how we set it up. Yep, um, or how to seed things, or, you know, any question would be great. All right, well, we're out of here. We'll see you all tomorrow.